If you're looking for a really simple way to improve WordPress speed optimization so you can increase website speed and make WordPress run faster, then you've come to the right place. Hello, I'm Yoda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now during this course, if you run into any troubles, just leave a comment below the video and I'll be more than happy to assist you. And don't be shy about asking for help. I've been a webmaster instructor, AKA the Web Yoda for over 20 years and I love to hear from my students. But if you could, please pay it forward. If you could like the video, subscribe to the video, share the video, tell your friends about the video. Those are the kind of things that help get the word out there so other students like you can find this video. Today we're going to learn how to optimize your website in 5 to 10 minutes with no technical skills. We'll first learn how to make these changes, then we'll apply the changes. This is going to be simple, fast, and safe to do. You don't have to worry about losing your website. We're going to cover that as well. If you prefer to skip the discussion, simply advance the video to 10 minutes. What we're going to learn today is what load time is, what bounce rate is, why load time even matters, how to measure your website load time, how to improve your website's load time, and then we're going to learn how to make websites load three times faster, maybe up to five times faster. The load time is simply the average amount of time it takes for a web page to display either on a device or screen. The bounce rate is defined as the percentage of visitors that visit your web page and leave without doing anything at all. Now the load time, being the amount of time it takes for your web page to load, directly affects the bounce rate. So the longer it takes your web page to load, the more visitors you'll lose before they have a chance to do anything at all. So how do we determine what the optimal load time for your website is? Google research found that the best target load time to reduce bounce rate is about 3 seconds. If you notice at this chart, at 3 seconds, 10% of the people have already left your site. At 4 seconds, 23% of the people have left. At 5 seconds, 38% of the people have left. And all the way up to 10 seconds, 65% of the people have already left. So basically, you're going to want to get your web page to load in 3 to 4 seconds, maybe 5, depending on how heavy your graphics are. But anything greater than that, and you risk having people leave your website without ever even seeing it. To improve our load time, we first need to be able to measure our load time. And to do that, we're going to use a website called gtmetrics.com. This is one of the most popular websites for speed testing your website, and it's free to use with no sign up. Now, in this gtmetrics sample, the website create a blog.com was submitted multiple times. Notice how the performance scores stay the same, however, the page details, specifically the load time, changes every time you test it. This is inherent to the internet itself. It's kind of like driving your car through traffic. No matter how fast your car is, you're going to be limited by the traffic that's out there. Now the way we're going to improve the load time for your website is by improving your performance scores. So you probably already noticed as our performance scores improve, our load time gets faster as well. Page speed score is a set of best practices created by Google to yield faster loading websites. So basically if you follow Google's best practices, your website will inherently load faster. Now you'll notice as our page speed score improves, our load time goes down as well. So clearly there's a relationship between page speed score and how quickly your website loads. Why slow is a set of 23 rules created by Yahoo that can affect the website performance. So basically if we can prove our why slow score, we can improve the load time as well. So it's assumed that the why in why slow stands for Yahoo, but I like to think of it as why slow, meaning why is my site so slow? So basically if we can improve on these 27 rules, we'll be able to improve the performance of our website, which means we'll be able to load our web page faster. As was the case with page speed score, as your Y slow score gets better, your load time will improve as well. Now ultimately, we're not manually making any of the changes to meet the Google standards or the Yahoo standards. We're going to use a plugin that's going to do all the work for us. What we're looking at here is average performance scores across the internet. On the left hand side are the 250 most popular websites organized by their page speed. Notice that the majority of the websites fall in the bottom three categories, whereas less than 25% of all the websites out there fall into the A-B category. Shown in the graph on the right-hand side are Y-Slow scores for 5,000 random websites. Again, notice how the majority of those websites are in the bottom three categories, and in this case, less than 10% of all websites have a Y-Slow score good enough to fall into the A-B category. Now this is good news for us because if we can get our website to fall into the A-B categories, that means that we're going to be faster than the majority of the websites out there, which means we'll lose the least amount of traffic due to bounce rate. Now under page details falls three categories, the load time, the size, and the request. 
For our purposes, load time is really all that's going to matter to us. We want to improve our performance scores to improve our load time, and then we're going to try to get our load time down to a really good time around three seconds. Now, what we're looking at here are examples of some of the most popular websites on the internet. So I find it quite interesting that these sites have done such a really bad job of optimizing. Now, I understand they're on really fast servers, so even with bad grades, they can get a high speed. But with just the littlest bit of optimization, their websites could be two or three times as fast. It's also interesting to note that the top scores seem to always be social media related. So clearly, social media is on the ball when it comes to website optimization. One of the questions that's likely to come up is, should I shoot for a A100, A100 score? And the answer is absolutely no. There's no real benefit to having an A100, A100 score. And in fact, look at this website here. As we scroll down, it's like something out of the 90s. Sure, it loads fast, but at what expense? It's not a nice looking site. Optimally, we want to shoot for having a scores that are in the A, B range. It doesn't really matter if they're both A's or both B's. You're just trying to get your performance scores up into the A, B range. And by doing that, you should be able to reduce your load time somewhere around two, three, or four seconds. So for example, this website, enforcingthelawn.com, notice how nice of a website this is. Sure, it doesn't have A100, A100 scores, but for a site that loads in 2.4 seconds, it's surely a nice professional looking website. So we understand what load time is. We understand why we want to improve our load time. Now we need to understand how to improve our load time. Now the good news is the website optimization we're going to use today is not going to require you to have any technical skills whatsoever. Now within website optimization, there's three different things we're going to do. We're going to optimize your images, we're going to optimize your PHP, and we're going to optimize your WordPress. To start, let's look at PHP. WordPress runs on top of PHP. Look at it this way. WordPress is your vehicle and PHP is the engine. Now most web hosting companies are going to install PHP 5 by default because it's compatible with the most plugins out there. Now PHP 7 should be compatible with all the plugins that have been updated within the last three or four years. The advantage for us is that WordPress will run 50 to 60% faster if we upgrade to PHP 7. Now in this set of PHP 7 examples, notice how the performance scores stay the same. This is because we haven't changed anything about our website. All we've done is upgrade our version of PHP to version 7, and by doing that we've realized a 50 to 60% load time improvement. WordPress optimization starts with the installation of a cache plugin. A cache plugin creates a saved copy of all your web pages, so each page only needs to be generated once. In this example, we're looking at how a website that has no cache operates. Every time a web page is requested, it has to be generated from scratch and then it's sent to your browser. Generating all your pages on demand every time they're requested takes a lot of computing time, which means that your load time is affected as well. In this example, we're looking how a website functions that has a cache plugin installed. Basically, each page is generated once, and then the next time somebody asks for the page, a copy of the page is sent to them without having to generate the page. Now we need to choose the WordPress cache plugin we're going to use. The best WordPress speed optimization cache plugins are WP Rocket and WP Fastest Cache. We compare both of these side by side, and WP Rocket won all 10 times. We're going to show you the results of those tests next. Now in this example, we started with no cache plugin, and then we installed the WP Fastest Cache plugin. And by doing this, we're able to get our website to load 39% faster on average, and in some cases up to 88% faster. So at this point, I'm like, wow, you know, it looks like WP Fastest Cache may be the one I want to go with. Next, we replace the WP Fastest Cache plugin with WP Rocket. And what we found was our website load time was 31% faster on average using WP Rocket over WP Fastest Cache. So to review, WP Fastest Cache improved our website with no cache by 39% on average, whereas WP Rocket improved on top of the Fastest Cache scores by 31% on average. And finally, we want to look at image optimization. Basically, image optimization reduces the image file size without sacrificing image quality. So for example, if we could reduce the size of our images by half, that would mean that our images would load twice as fast. In this example, we use the Imagify plugin. Now, Imagify is made by WP Rocket, which means it's going to be 100% compatible. And another benefit of Imagify is it's free to use so long as your images on your website don't exceed 25 megabytes, which is highly unlikely. So by adding the Imagify plugin, we were able to improve our load time again by another 31% on average, and in some cases up to 63% faster. So in this final example, we're looking at our total optimization results. 
In the absolute worst case scenario, we were able to improve our website speed by 160%, which means it's 1.6 times faster. On average, across all 10 websites, we improved our website speed by 276%, which is greater than two and a half times faster. So in review, the optimal load time, the target load time we were looking for was three seconds. When I started, the average load time across all 10 websites was 12.4 seconds. After upgrading to PHP 7, installing WP Rocket, and installing Imagify, I was able to reduce the average time to 3.2 seconds across all 10 websites, which is almost exactly the target we were looking for. So to get started, let's go ahead and go to webyoda.com front slash optimize. And from here we can see the three different types of optimization we're going to do. First, we're going to optimize our PHP by upgrading it. Next, we're going to optimize our WordPress by adding the WP Rocket plugin. And finally, we'll optimize our images using the Imagify plugin. So the first thing we'll look at is the PHP optimization. And if we go here, it's going to be three simple steps. Now, if you're not using HostGator, this will be a little bit different, but it should be the same. Basically, you need to log into the control panel for your hosting account. Then you need to look for a piece of software called PHP Selector. And finally, you need to change the version of PHP you're running from 5 to 7. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to open up a new tab, and I'm going to go to my control panel. I'm going to log in. Now on the left-hand side, I'm going to pick software. You could also do a search here just for PHP. And in the software listing, it should have what I'm looking for, and here it is, the PHP selector. So I'm going to choose that. And notice when this comes up, it says I'm currently using 5.4 PHP. We're going to choose 7.1, and we'll hit update. Now at this point, your PHP has been updated. So the first thing you want to do is go back to your browser and choose one of your websites, in this case, Web Yoda, and see that it still loads, meaning that it works just fine with the new version. Now if for some reason this doesn't work correctly, you can hit back. I can choose the different version, and then I can hit update. Now with HostGator, even though there are newer versions of PHP, for example, I think it goes up to 7.4, they've chosen the one they feel is the most stable for our uses as well as compatible with the most plugins. So for example, let's say they offered 7.4, but yet you had plugins that didn't work with 7.4. That would break your website. They found that 7.1 gives you just about as much speed improvement as you'd get with 7.4 without worrying about it breaking your website. So we can go ahead and close that tab. And now we're ready to go to the next step. So if I back up, and the next step is to do the WordPress optimization. We're going to use WP Rocket to do that. So we'll choose this middle button. And now we have two choices, one to get the plugin, and two, the settings for it. So if you ever need to go back and see what your settings are, if you click on this, it'll show you the settings that you need to use to make yours work correctly. We're going to walk through all the settings so you won't need that page for what we're going to do today. So I'm going to back up and we're going to choose the WP Rocket plugin button. And that takes us to the WP Rocket website. We're going to choose Buy Now. And you have three choices. If you have a single website, you're going to do the $49 version. If you have two or three websites, you'll want to use the $99 version. And if you're going to have a whole bunch of websites, you're going to need the $249 version. So most likely you're going to pick the $49 version, but for me I'm going to pick the $249 version because I have lots of websites that I want to use this with. So I'm going to choose this option. Now I need to create an account. Now I'll pick an email address, yoda at webyoda.com. Name, Yoda Yoda. Company, Web Yoda Inc. Scroll down. Choose a credit card. Choose an expiration date. CVC code and place my order. And my order has been placed and I'm ready to download the plugin. So I'll click on download. It's downloaded. Now I can click here, show in a folder. And there it is in our folder. And now we're ready to apply WP Rocket to one of our websites. But before we do that, let's go ahead and check the speed of our website to see how fast our website is before we've made these upgrades. Now keep in mind we've already upgraded to PHP 7, which means the scores we're about to see will be 50 to 60% better than they would have been if we were still at PHP 5. To test our website speed, we're going to go to the URL gtmetrics.com. And from here you want to enter the URL of your website that you're testing. 
In our case, it's going to be jose1.com. That's the site we're going to add WP Rocket to today. And we'll click Test Your Site. They run about a half million of these tests a day. So it's understandable this test could run a little bit long, but it doesn't take too terribly long. Okay, so the results are in. Our page speed score is a miserable F, 26%, and our Y slow score is average at best at a C, 76%. And currently our load time is around 9.9 .9 seconds, and we want to get this down to three seconds or less. I close that, and now I'm ready to go to the WordPress admin for my website, in this case, jose1.com front slash wp dash admin. And I'll log in. So there's a couple things we want to do before we can add WP Rocket to our website. The first is my disclaimer and public service announcement. Before you do anything like this, something drastic that could have aggressive changes to your website, you want to make a backup of your website. Preferably, you want to make a backup where you have a local copy. That's how I do it. Now, in my case, I use Backup Buddy. If you don't currently have a backup solution for making local backups, go ahead and visit my link at the top right. It's a short video I made on how to safely make a local backup of your WordPress website. Now, in our case, Backup Buddy is already installed on here. So basically, I just want to go into my dashboard and go down to Backup Buddy. I clicked on that. And right here in the middle of the screen, it says Complete Backup. I'll choose Complete Backup. Now, I can scroll down and watch the progress. Doesn't take too terribly long for it to make a backup file. Now, I've never had a problem with WP Rocket corrupting my website, and I've used it over 20 times. However, I can't take into account how this could affect every single website on the planet, so the best advice I can give you is make a backup first in case something goes wrong and you can easily restore. So our backup's complete. And now, if you're using Backup Buddy, I'll scroll up. Now there's a button to download it. I'll choose Download. Now it's downloading a complete copy of my WordPress website to my local computer. Now the download is complete, so if I come down here, I can show in folder, and there it is, I have my backup for Jose1 and I have my WP Rocket. Now make sure you store these somewhere locally so that you know where they're at in case you need them later. And the other thing that we want to do is make sure you're not already running a caching program. For example, if you have HostGator or maybe Bluehost, it'll say caching right here, and inside of this it has cache settings. The easiest way to find that on any of them, if you have caching, is to go to Settings, and then scroll to the bottom, and it shows the cache level. Now this has a cache on it, but it's turned off. If yours shows any other level, you need to set that to level 0. So I set it to 0, for example. Hit Save Changes. And then you want to come up here and do Purge All. Now, it's likely you don't have a cache running at all, but if you have one or you've tried some other ones, make sure you delete those before we proceed. So now we're ready to install WP Rocket. So we're going to choose Plugins, Add New, Upload Plugin, Choose File, we'll select WP Rocket, Open, Install Now, Activate Plugin. Now we need to go to our WP Rocket plugin to adjust our settings. For me, I scroll down and I find the plugin. So we're under plugins, here's WP Rocket, and I'll just choose settings. From here, I want to scroll down. We're going to actually make changes to the cache tab, the file optimization tab, and the media tab. The rest of them already have the settings we're going to want. So we'll click on the cache tab. Now, best practices will suggest go ahead and just add each one of the selections you're going to do one by one, and then go test to see that your website's still working. So if it stops working, you know to undo that particular option and just skip it. But since I've never had any problems, I'm going to do each of these tabs one by one, and we'll go check our website and see that it's still working. So we're on the Cache tab, and I'm going to turn on basically everything except for this one, if you have multiple users, if you're having login type situations and you want to turn that on, but there's no reason to make the system work harder if you're not actually going to do that. So in this case, that's the only change I made. Scroll down. I'll hit Save Changes. Changes are saved. And up here, I can right-click on that and choose Open Link in New Tab and visit my website. And I scroll down and see that the website is still loading just fine. So we're good so far. Now we'll go back 
to our WordPress admin. We'll scroll down. Now we want to choose file optimization. And we're going to turn on everything. So we're going to choose this one. We'll choose this one. We'll choose this one. Activate. We'll choose this one. Activate. Scroll down. Choose this one. Scroll down. Choose this one. Scroll down. Choose this one. Activate. Choose this one. And save changes. It's really not important to try to understand what all these things do. If it works, it works. Those changes were saved. Now we'll go back to our website. We'll hit reload. And our website is still loading. And it looks just fine. We'll go back to our WordPress admin. We'll scroll down. And the last tab we're going to work on is the media tab. And again, we're going to activate everything. So we'll choose that one. 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 Enable. And save changes. Now that those changes are complete, we can go back to our website, hit reload, scroll down, and see that our website is still happy. The final thing we want to do is optimize our images. And to do that, we're going to use a free plugin from WP Rocket called Imagify. So we'll open up a new tab. We're going to go back to webyoda.com front slash optimize. And we want to install Imagify. We click on that. And basically, there's two parts to it. One is to get the free plugin. And the other is to set up an account so that you can use your free plugin. So first, let's get the plugin. So we'll click that link. And it downloaded it. Now we have a copy of that sitting in our downloads folder. Now we want to click on the Get Imagify account for free. And that takes us to their website. And you'll just click on My Account. And if you already have an account, you can sign in. If you don't, you can click Create One. Now, I already have an account. But once you create an account, it'll be the same process. You basically sign into your account. And also, mine's not a free account because I have so many websites. But in your case, you're going to use it for free. And simply come over here and pull this down arrow and look for API integration. And then from here, you want to click this and copy this to the clipboard, which copies the access token to our clipboard. Now we can close that, go back to our WordPress admin. Now we've got that sitting on our clipboard, but we don't have the plugin installed yet. So we'll click on Plugins again. We'll choose Add New, Upload Plugin, Choose File, and Imagify has been added to our list because we already downloaded it. Open, Install Now, Activate Plugin. Now that it's activated, we need to adjust the settings within the plugin. So we can click on Plugins, which in this case, we're already there. We're going to scroll down and look for Imagify. And currently, there's a new copy, a new version of this. So we'll go ahead and update it. Now we can choose Settings, scroll down. We already got our free API, so we can just paste it in here. Hit Save Changes. It says it's valid. We're good to go. Now we simply scroll to the bottom and choose Save and Go to Bulk Optimizer. And now we're ready to optimize our files. Again, we're going to use the defaults. We'll scroll down. Now choose Imagify Them All. Then choose Start Optimization. Now this process can take a little bit of time, and you don't want to leave this page. Just kind of basically walk away and come back later and see that it's all done. One question you might have is, what if I add images later? What happens to those? How do I optimize those? Well, they get optimized on the fly for you automatically. You could also come back into your plugin again and choose Optimize Them All, and it'll optimize anything that hasn't already been optimized. OK, so now our image optimization has reached 100%. That means all of our images have been optimized. 
And it also means that all the optimization we plan to do to our website is now complete. Now at this point, with all the changes we've made, we'll go back up, hit reload, make sure our site's still loading. And it is. Everything looks great and wonderful. We'll go back to our WordPress. So we're 100% optimized. If we scroll up, it'll show us what it's accomplished. It basically took 43 megabytes worth of images and reduced them down to 20 megabytes worth of images. And the free package gives you 25 megabytes, so this should have fit within the free package just fine. So our optimization for our website is complete. One of the things I like to do, though, is you go up here, there's a WP Rocket option. And under this, you can choose Preload Cache. It's going to pre-make all the pages in your website so that whenever somebody else visits your website, they'll load super fast. Now that we're done optimizing our website, I want to see what our numbers look like. So let's go ahead and open another tab. We'll go back to gtmetrics.com. We'll type in our website again and test your site. And wow, look at that. Our page score is now a 95% A. Our Y slow score is a 88% B and our full load time was under three seconds at 2.4 seconds. I think we can agree that's a huge accomplishment. And just as a reminder, if we look back at this slide, you'll see that the target of three seconds was because we only lose 10% of our people to bounce rate. If we're up to 10 seconds, we could lose 65% of our people. So basically, we reduce the number of people who would leave our site before they did anything from somewhere between 50 and 60% all the way down to 10% or less. Now, I truly hope I covered everything you needed in this tutorial. Now, if there was something I didn't mention or you had additional questions, please leave them below. I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. But if I don't know the answer, I'll go, hey, I don't know. But if I do know the answer, I can find the answer, I'll give it to you, and maybe we can work on it together. So I really enjoyed doing this. I hope you had a great time as well. The only real payment I'm looking for, if I could possibly get a subscribe out of this, possibly a like out of this, that'd be super helpful. But outside of that, I just hope you have a great day. Peace out.